What's going on guys? Basquatch here. Welcome back to another video. Um, we're kind of changing things up here a little bit. Um, normally I've been posting only once a week. I'm going to start doing two videos a week um, simply because there's a lot of how-to videos to cover. Um, but also, you know, it'd be kind of weird to go a whole week without fishing. So we're going to be doing two videos a week. Um, Mondays are going to be for the how-to videos. Fridays are going to be for the fishing adventures. And considering today is Monday, um, we're going straight into our second installment of how to fishing. Um, last time we covered we covered rods, um, the different kinds of rods and how to choose a fishing rod. Uh, today we're going to be covering the next part of your fishing tools, and that's going to be the reels. So without any further ado, let's get right into it. All right, so for simplicity, we're not going to be covering like every single type of rod and reel. We only really want to cover the uh, three most common that you will encounter. Unfortunately, as much as I love fly fishing, I'm not going to be talking about fly fishing for now. I'm going to leave fly fishing out of this. So for the three most common reels, you're going to have your spin reels, your bait casters, your conventional reels. Um, I don't have a conventional reel, um, so unfortunately I won't be able to show you guys a conventional reel. But I do have a spinning reel and I do have a bait caster. So start off with the easiest one and I guess the beginning reel. And that's going to be the spinning reels. Now the nice thing about the spinning reel, um, it's it's really easy to use, um, really good for beginners, especially if you're just getting into fishing. It's also very nice if you're catching like a large variety of fish. It can catch your smaller fish, your larger fish, um, everything except for, you know, mid to large saltwater fish. But the components of these guys, um, so first of all, it's going to sit underneath your rod. So if this is the rod here, it's going to sit underneath. And then you have your handle. Um, this is going to be, if you want to switch the handle from left to right, that's one of the other really nice things about these spinning reels. It's super easy to switch this guy over. And it also has a spool and your drag on the top, and then it has this arm. I guess the, the biggest downfall with the spinning reels, um, and it's not even really that big a deal, depending on what you're throwing. Since it comes off the spool from the top like this, it's coming off in a circle so you're going to have this loop that you're throwing out that causes more friction on the first eye of your rod which is going to decrease your casting distance and also somewhat decrease your accuracy as well but it's really good all around reel um, it's really good for catching you know crappie trout bluegill um, any of your sunfish bass catfish huge variety of fish these guys are really nice i do if if you're just getting started into fishing, I would highly recommend a spinning reel of sorts. And even if you know, you're know you an exper experienced angler, I think everybody should have at least one spinning reel in their bag. The bait caster. Now with the bait caster, it's going to be quite different than your spinning reel. If this is the rod, your spinning reel sits on top of the rod like this. And that's going to be facing you the entire time. Now the handle. It's going to be on the side, um, either the right or left, depending on how you reel it in. And then it has a star drag on it. It's also got the spool tensioner knob and the brakes. And then it has this line guide on the top for one when you're reeling in and also when you're making a cast. And then it has the thumb knob. Now the thumb knob is used for when you are making a cast. You push that thumb knob down. Once you're done, you reel it in and that pops back into place. Now the way that these dials work, essentially your brakes are going to be controlling, let me show you this, okay, so when you have the thumb knob down, your spool is going to be free spinning, okay. Now the brakes here, when you're making a cast, are going to slow down the spool as you make the cast, which is going to help prevent birds' nests. And then the spool tensioner knob does somewhat the same thing, um, but what it's going to do is it's going to slow down the spool towards the end of the cast. So as it's slowing down, the tensioner rod is, or the tensioner knob is gonna slow this guy down even further, again, to prevent bird's nests. So whenever you're loading up a lure or a bait, you wanna mess with these dials. Um, a good way to do that is before you make a cast, you just push that thumb knob down, watch your bait fall. And if your bait hits the ground and you it, it stops when it's supposed to, you should be good to go and at least start making some casts. You are probably going to make have a lot of bird's nests when you're first starting out. Everybody still gets bird's nests every now and again, so it's nothing to really get discouraged about. But these are for the more advanced anglers. Want to expand your game? I do highly recommend getting a bait caster. 
everybody I know that is serious about targeting bass really throw these guys a whole lot. Now, I guess we'll talk about the conventional reel, and we will use the baitcaster as an example because I don't have a conventional reel. But you'll see the baitcaster has like somewhat of an egg shape. The conventional is going to be a round shape, a circle, if you will. Um, but it does also sit on top of your your rod, just like the baitcaster does. Biggest differences with the baitcaster and the conventional reel is. Um, uh, at least all the ones that I've seen, instead of having two parts of your handle, you only have one, like the spinning reel. So I guess it'd be like the handle on this guy. But usually they're a lot knobbier um, because conventional rods are typically thrown to be targeting really, really heavy fish. A lot of them have a depth counter on it, um, which is going to be, usually sits right on the side of your spool on top of your conventional reel. And it tells you how deep you're sitting in the water there's a reset button and it'll count down as you're reeling in as well which is pretty cool but when you make a cast it'll count how far it is out and as you're reeling in you could you know see what depth you're sitting at um, but there is also a button or a lever that's on the side of the conventional reel that um, it's brief spool lever slash button and what that does is um, it allows it's just like the thumb knob on the baitcaster, how it lets the spool go, and it'll allow you to drop down or make a cast if you have a conventional rod, a reel that conventional reel that does cast. I guess the conventional reels really come in two categories: the ones that do cast, which you'll see a lot of times people, you know, are fishing from the beach or you know a shoreline with a conventional reel, but and they're targeting typically like really good sized fish. I do know in freshwater, a lot of people who are using conventional reels or fishing for catfish. But if you're catching, you know, big ones, you know, I'm talking like sharks and rays, you're going to be using a conventional reel. Other type of conventional reel that you'll see is ones that don't cast. Um, what I mean by that is people who are trolling, um, they just flip it over the free spool and drop their bait straight off the side of the boat or the pier or what have you. Um, not really making casts, just kind of dropping down off the side of something. That's The conventional reels are pretty cool. I don't have one. I've been landlocked my whole life, and I don't normally target catfish, so it just doesn't have a place for me. Maybe someday it will if I ever decide to do some saltwater fishing. Um, but that'll talk about the types. Now let's talk about sizes. It can be really confusing, so I'm going to try to make this as simple and quick as I can for you guys. We're going to categorize reel sizes into three different categories. Now, typically when you're looking at a reel, um, they'll either be a two-digit, a three-digit, or four-digit number. Really, you just need to focus on the first part of that. Um, for my example, I put everything into thousands just to make it a lot easier. Um, but for the first group, let's talk about the 500 to 3,000 size reels. 500 is going to be your ultralight, and then 3,000 is going to be your average size reel um, in that order. So 500 ranging all the way up to 3,000. These are going to be really, really good, especially the ultralight will be really good for ultralight fishing. Um, and then as you move further up, you're going to slowly be targeting larger and larger fish. Um, the 3,000 is a really good all-around reel because it, it holds up really well. There's a lot of line capacity on those guys um, in case you do need to make further casts or if the fish is finding you really hard and pulling a lot of your line out, those 3,000s are going to be really nice. Um, but that's, you'll see it, I'll show you on my spinning reel, I've got a 2500. Uh, this is the Shimano FX 2500 HG, which you'll see right here, written really nice and clear right here, 2500. So this is just under, I guess, what you would call an average size reel, because um, most of the ones that I see are like 3000, people consider 3000 normal, and anything smaller is small, and anything larger is large. <laughs> Um, now, going beyond 3,000, when you're talking 4,000 to 6,000 range, those are going to be for um, larger freshwater or mid-sized saltwater fish. Um, so anytime you're fishing like a catfish, which will be the larger freshwater fish. Unfortunately, I don't, I, I'm not too familiar with saltwater fishing, but they're going to be for mid-range saltwater fish. Um, so. That's going to be, I guess, if you're buying a reel and you're landlocked like I am, if 
if you're looking to be catching heavier fish, go for something between the 4,000 and 6,000 range. Now going beyond that, um, I believe it jumps, the, I don't think there's 7,000s, but there's certainly 8,000s. So 8,000 to 10,000, those are going to be for seriously large fish. Um, you're talking like monster catfish if you're fishing freshwater or if you're fishing saltwater the 10,000s those are going to be your reels used for sharks with conventional reels the best way to gauge what category they fit into um, unfortunately it's not always quite as clear as it is with the rest of the reels but just look at the overall weight of the reel and also the line capacity and that's going to tell you what category it fits into um, so really basics try to make it as unconfusing as I can because a lot of people do still get pretty confused about what the different sizes are in reels. All right, so now that we've talked about the types of reels and different reel sizes, um, I'll kind of give you guys the guidelines on what, what to look for when you're purchasing your first fishing reel or just upgrading a fishing reel. Some important factors to keep in mind, um, more bearings the better. These reels are gonna have bearings in them. Um, sometimes there's six, sometimes there's 10. The more, the better. It's just gonna make it a lot smoother when you're reeling it in. The more bearings, the better. The more bearings that your reel can get away with, the better off you are, because it's gonna be smoother and more comfortable. You're also gonna to wanna to look for a smooth drag. If, you're, if you have your drag cranked down a little bit, you give a tug on it and it's really rough, it's probably not the reel you want. You want something that's gonna be really nice and smooth, because um, sometimes those cheaper reels or you know the lower quality reels those drag systems they lock as the drags being pulled and that's not what you want that's a really good way to lose a fish you also are going to want to look for the weight of the reel while it's on the rod so if you're buying a combo some those are paired together pretty nicely but if you're buying them separately go ahead and put that reel on on a rod see how it feels um, but also keep in mind that certain reels require certain type rods in my last video we were talking about you know the trigger stick or the pistol grip your rods are going to be specific to certain types of rods your reels are going to be specific to certain types of rods the overall feel when you put the combo together that's going to be another thing to look for when purchasing a new reel you're also going to want to keep in mind of material um, all reels are made of something now some of the cheaper materials that you'll see have graphite aluminum and plastic which are going to be your cheaper reels i don't really see a whole lot of plastic unless you got those kitty rods um i've got a few i didn't really want to pull them out though um, but some of those kitty rods like the barbie rods or the spider-man rods those are made of plastic and then you also have composite magnesium and high-tech alloy those are going to be your higher end reels they hold up really really well they are more expensive because they are of a higher grade um, my recommendations I would definitely go you know composite or graphite um, that's just a personal preference but they're still reasonably priced and they hold up pretty well as well and then the last thing to look for is line capacity um, you don't necessarily need a whole lot of line capacity unless you want to cast really far distances um, so really when you're looking at a reel find what's gonna work for you and you know try it out but at least now when you're shopping you're gonna know what to look for when purchasing your next reel alright guys that's gonna do it for today's video um, if you liked what you saw go ahead and let me know hit the like button go ahead and subscribe hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of the videos and leave a comment below um, two things I ask actually I still have zero recommendations on a name for the deer in the back here in my garage um, and then also let me know you know what your favorite reel is that you own or you know your dream reel if you have one that you really really want um, just let me know in the comment section i'd like to know what you guys think oh yeah before i forget i do want to set this announcement out there for you guys um, it's not set in stone with the date yet but myself my buddy rocco with the laugh channel and my buddy cody with fishing downtown denver we're going to be getting all three of us together um, for a live YouTube 1v1v1 challenge. It's going to be a ton of fun, but as it comes closer to time, we'll give you guys more details on that stuff. But, you know, stay tuned, stay listening to that stuff. That way you're not going to miss it. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, but until next time, tight lines and keep on fishing.